founding of America, coastal defenses have played a critical factor in defending America's liberty and prosperity. From star forts, disappearing guns, and concrete batteries, these defenses have fortified our position on the world stage. Beginning in 1794, Congress ordered the construction of coastal batteries to deter French and British aggression. By 1812, the first permanent forts were being built across the coastline. Due to the presence of these fortifications, British forces would avoid most major cities in 1812. In 1814, British forces attempted to assault Baltimore, yet were stopped in their tracks by the thundering guns of Fort McHenry. In 1821, the Bernard Board created a standard administrative system for fortification construction. This would go on to influence how forts were built over the next 100 years. However, by the onset of the Civil War, these forts were desperately outdated. Confederate rifle guns reduced Fort Sumner to rebel and shattered the confidence of fort designers the world over. In 1886, President Cleveland ordered the renovation of the forts so that this nation should be better protected. The result was the construction of many new batteries across our great country. These batteries emphasized the gun over the building itself. With this, concrete casemated guns, disappearing guns, and far more were constructed across the nation. Due to advances in technology, these guns could shoot further and faster, meaning that less were necessary to defend an area. To determine the effectiveness of these weaponry, the United States Navy judged them against the, the armor of two ships, the heavily armored and massive Italian warship Italia, and the lightly armored Chilean cruiser Esmeralda. These tests reveal that the, the Italia could be destroyed at 15,200 yards by mortar fire before the ship was in range of land at 10,000 yards and, and far before it could accurately hit coastal targets at 2,000 yards. In fact, within that 2,000 yard range, 12 and 14 inch coastal batteries could inflict massive damage on the vessel. It was determined that the Esmeralda could be hit and destroyed by any armaments within 10,000 yards. After determining the lethality of this new arsenal, it was deployed across American possessions the world over. These new defensive works included wonders of engineering, like Fort Drum in Manila Bay. This rock battleship was equipped with four 14-inch naval cannons and dominated the local area. However, in Europe, war was brewing. With the outbreak of World War I in 1914, coastal defenses would be tested in a distinctly modern war. When the German cruisers Scanhorst and Gneisenau attempted to attack the Falkland Islands, they were met by the hellfire of the coastal artillery. The barrage kept the ships at 16,500 yards, well beyond the reach of their own guns, and allowed the Royal Navy Squadron enough time to mobilize and destroy the German vessels. Incidents like this further strengthened the global belief in coastal artillery. However, with the introduction of submarines, naval warfare, and the increasing range of ship-based guns, ripples were sent through the American public. For at the, at the start of the war, American naval defenses were in a truly sorry state. They were unable to compete with the guns of European vessels, they were unable to stop submarines, and they were housed in rapidly deteriorating installations. The defenses needed to be overhauled. The answer to these flaws was a mobile artillery corps, consisting of, art, of railway guns, tractor-drawn artillery, and motorized units. Along with this, open gun batteries with a range of up to 360 degrees were built around major ports. These defenses were totally exposed to aircraft and instead of camouflage, relied on dispersed emplacements for protection. Unfortunately, with the onset of the Great Depression, dreams of a fortress America were dashed. On December 7th, 1941, the fiery legions of, of Japan descended upon the American Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor. The King Kamehameha Coastal Artillery Battery could do nothing to stop them. Following the Aleutian Campaign, a great endeavor was mounted to defend the American public from any further foreign aggression. Hundreds of concrete batteries, casemates, and bunkers were constructed to protect American trade and deter foreign invasion. There is no finer example of the Great Fortress America than that of San Francisco. Equipped with the latest coastal artillery and heavily fortified, 
the batteries along the coastline could devastate enemy movements as far north as Point Reyes and would ensure the safety and longevity of the local population. I stand now at Battery Chamberlain. This battery consists of four six inch naval guns at its height. While these guns could not effectively destroy ships at range, they could prove devastating against enemy vessels in San Francisco Bay. However, on the other side of the globe, these defenses would now endure a trial by fire. The mighty Fort Drum, dominating Manila Bay, was nearly indestructible. It endured heavy bombardment by Japanese forces, but remained mostly intact. It could not be taken by conventional means, yet it failed in its one cardinal purpose. The immobile rock of Fort Drum could do nothing to stop the Japanese from landing far to the south and seizing the city of Manila without heavy resistance. The fall of Manila, the garrison was forced to spike their guns and surrender. A similar fate befell that of countless fortifications the world over. Without universal coverage, these static guns could simply be outmaneuvered. If there is no need to fight a superior enemy, then why engage them at all? In response to these total strategic fa failures, the German Atlantic Wall was constructed in 1944 with a very different philosophy. If all the coast lies defended, then the enemy will have to engage the fortifications. This vast line stretched all the way from the Spanish border in the south to Norway in the north. Though this would prove to be just as devastating as the mistake at Fort Drum, the German troops, guns, and fortifications were massively outstretched and undermanned. Without a strong concentration of force, the Atlantic Wall was no match for the invading Allied forces. With the breakthrough in Normandy, its end had been realized. However, these structures were not totally useless. Fort Drum halted a Japanese attack from the sea and allowed many to, sca to escape. In fact, even without its guns, it was the last bastion of Japanese resistance in the Philippines during the American counter-invasion. Though the Atlantic Wall crumbled against the might of the, of the Allied forces, it required the largest naval fleet ever assembled, nearly 12,000 aircraft and over 150,000 soldiers to take it. It is not the duty or purpose of coastal defenses to stop invasion or destroy the enemy. Instead, they stand to deter an enemy from attacking at all. And if they do, then these bastions of steel and concrete will force the enemy to commit additional resources to that attack. Resources that in many cases they cannot afford. These installations do not exist to totally stop an enemy. Instead, they exist to ensure that the enemy is unable to maintain a longer campaign and to make a war more costly. And in that vein, these defenses stand to deter war at all. They stand as, the, as one of the first major deterrents. However, with the deployment of the atomic bomb and the dawn of a new age, an era without conventional war between major powers, these deterrents were no longer effective. With the development of the atomic bomb, the era of coastal defenses had ended, and a new era had begun. The increasing power of the Air Force and with the prevalence of atomic weaponry, there was no longer a need for these static defenses. For new and non-static deterrents had been developed. By 1950, all coastal batteries in the United States had been decommissioned, including this one I stand at today. And the new doctrine of mutually assured destruction ensured that we do not have to worry about an enemy invasion. No enemy fleet will ever appear on the horizon because if they do, their home country could be destroyed before their first shot was fired. The end of that era has come and a new era has dawned. An era of globalism. An era without the need for localized defenses. For now, we can strike anywhere in the world at any time.